Welcome to the History Law Channel. You join me here again in St Pancras Old Churchyard. Today we're looking at another grave. This is a rather special one. This is to the original feminist. This is to Mary Wollstonecraft. And here she is. Now she was born in Spitalfields in April of 1759. And unfortunately her childhood wasn't that wonderful. Her father was a failed professional man and they moved quite frequently. He was also a violent man. And the fact that she was protecting her mother and comforting her actually played a very large part in her life. And we're going to have a quick look at that life now. Welcome to London. Mary Wollstonecraft, as an adolescent, befriended Fanny Blood, with whom she formed an enduring bond. After the death of her mother in 1780, Mary actually left her own home and went to live with the Blood family. It was like a female enclave that survived on the small earnings they made from paintings and needlework. In 1784, facing the lack of opportunities for women, Wollstonecraft decided to set up a school with her sister Eliza and Fanny Blood. They set the school up in Islington on Newington Green. In 1785, Fanny Blood left the school after she married and moved to Lisbon in Portugal. She was soon pregnant and in her isolation, she actually wrote to Mary, begging her to join her and see her through the birth of her child. Although it meant jeopardizing the school, Mary left for Lisbon, where she encountered a friend already in premature labor. Sadly, Fanny died in Mary's arms and the baby survived, but only a short time after. Returning to England, Mary found her school in critical financial condition and was forced to close it. She started earning some money by writing a conduct book based on her experience as a teacher, thoughts on the education of daughters, which would be brought to press in 1787 by one of the foremost liberal publishers of the time, Joseph Johnson. She then became the governess to the two children of Viscount Kingsborough in County Cork. She stayed there for just over a year, but hated the position. Mary was now determined to earn her money as a writer, but started as a translator from French to English but also reviewing for Joseph Johnson's periodical, Analytical Review. It was also during this time, she became acquainted with radical thinkers like William Blake, William Wordsworth, and more importantly, William Godwin. She first met Godwin in 1791, and at first, they didn't get along at all. A year later saw the publication of the works that made her most famous, A Vindication of the Rights of Women, published by Johnson in 1792. The same year saw her travel to France to witness the French Revolution firsthand, which led to the 1794 publication, Historical and Moral View of the French Revolution. Mary renewed her acquaintance with William Godwin, and though they kept separate apartments and circles of friends, they soon became romantically involved. Although they had both written against the prevailing notions of matrimony, when it became clear that Mary was pregnant, they were determined to marry. The wedding was performed in St Pancras Church on the 29th of March, 1797. On the 31st of August, Mary Wollstonecraft gave birth to a daughter who was given both their names as an intellectual inheritance, Mary Wollstonecraft Godwin. The child was very healthy, but there were complications after the birth and Mary died of an infection just 11 days later on the 10th of September. In 2020, a new memorial was unveiled on Newington Green, just a few yards from where Mary's school had been in the late 18th century. That too, like Mary's life's work, caused some controversy. There is another little addendum to this tale, and that is, it was here that her daughter, also named Mary, actually met her husband. Her daughter Mary would come and tend the grave, and it was here she met Percy by Shelley. She married eventually and became Mary Shelley, and she's more famous as the author of Frankenstein. Thank you very much for watching today. If you do enjoy these videos, then please go to historylord.co.uk, see about a walking tour of London, or if you want to subscribe to the channel, then please do that. And if you want to see when videos are uploaded, there's a little notification bell just down below. And also, have a look in the description below, and you'll see about James's YouTube channel, which is Last Line Films. Thank you for watching. We'll see you very, very soon. Take care. is a grave to one of the original feminist activists we've ever known. Uh, we've, why did I go 
Attenborough then we've ever known. Here, deep in the heart of St Pancras.